Hello everyone, it's Triple Z Hacker here, and we are back with the Shogunate Total War Tournament 2020. I have a great match to provide some analysis and commentary on for you guys, but before we get into the actual battle, be sure to subscribe to check out the rest of the tournament coverage on my channel, as well as tons of other Shogun 2 videos. Also check the links in the description to subscribe to Smother Drone's YouTube channel, who will also be covering the tournament. Now without further ado, let us begin with the first battle. All right, so before we get into the first battle, I just want to say that currently in terms of the tournament uploads, we are now moving into losers round two and obviously into round four or the semifinals of the winner's bracket. So I hope you guys enjoy these next set of videos I have for you this week. It's going to be a lot of fun and we have a lot of great battles ahead. Now for this match and the opening battle we have here, I'll introduce the players and go over the map and the armies that each of the players brought. So, representing the powerful Ashikaga clan, we have Samurai Extra 3064. And representing the Kikawa clan, we have Anito. Now, for the map that was selected, we have Ubayu Onsen, which, as you can see, is an interesting map since there are about like three ridges along the center and you have like these little valleys in between and there are two key buildings we have on this side the sword dojo and on the far left side we have the archery dojo now the sword dojo is the better of the two so i expect both players to be rushing over into this area and largely most of the fighting on this map happens on this side typically but it does occasionally happen over here as well it just depends on which key buildings are where now let us start with the army compositions with the Ashikaga. So for the front line of the Ashikaga, right next to some of these uh, deer here, we have um, some Yari Samurai, about four Yari Samurai. That's so interesting, by the way. I've never really noticed like animals in Shogun 2 on any of the maps that much in particularly. So this is... Just crazy to see. This is almost like something you would see in like Age of Empires or a completely different strategy game. Anyways, so we have the four Yari Samurai. Then we have the four Nodachi Samurai following. You can see that they're tightly uh, deployed here. And then we have four bow units. One of them being bow warrior monks. Or two bow warrior monks, excuse me. And then two bow samurai. On the back, we have two bow cav, and then over here, right at the edge of the tree line, we have some formidable Yari cav. On the far left side, we have two more cav units deployed. We have two Yari cav. So overall, a really balanced army. You got eight infantry, four spears, four swords. You got four bows, and the rest being cav, which is about five cav units. Overall, a pretty balanced army. I would say the two bow warrior monks should really be enough. I don't really know if the bow samurai are necessary with this army. Maybe switch for like two katana samurai or maybe um, other melee units. Maybe even more yaris potentially as well. Or maybe like an extra, you know, ashigaru or something just for more units. But overall, really balanced army here. Now for Anito, let's see what the Kikawa brought. So we got... Four units of bow samurai then we have one two three four five naginata samurai and they're upgraded as well all like rank four geez then we got one two or wait let's see no three katana samurai and then four naginata samurai and they're all upgraded to rank four so those are some elite samurai troops and we got three yari cav and we have four bows as I already mentioned so pretty balanced army as well a really elite army all things considering because there's not as many units in total so it's be interesting to see quantity versus quality let's get the battle underway and of course we'll fast forward the opening so we can get right into the action so right off the bat both armies advancing the front lines forward we got the uh, cav of the ashikaga rushing out towards the archery dojo which is a good strategy considering all the bow units that the Ashikaga brought. And then we got the Yari Cav in the woods over here. The Kikawa Cav kind of um, flanking over here onto this ridge. And of course we got Rapid Advance with the Yaris. Which really I think should have been used at the beginning. To establish like dominance on this side of the dojo. Rather than letting the opponent get into the dojo per se. But 
you know, all things considered, establishing the front lines here. Now the skirmishing begins. Meanwhile, we have Cav on this side. Downhill charged by the Kikawa Cav here. And isn't that a tongue twister? Kikawa Cav. <laughs> Anyways, this brutal fighting here in the woods. Yashikaga, sort of an even fight, but here come Moriari Cav from the Kikawa here. Would have been better if they charged behind, but and even some more. So a forced concentration of the Cav here, really helping the Kikawa out. We got the bow calf right here, and this is a really crucial moment in the battle. And I want you guys to all be aware of what's going on here, like what exactly is happening. So as you can see, we have the skirmishing, right? We got the bow units here, and then we got, you know, the front lines just sitting here. This bow calf right here, and, you know, shoot at the katana samurai like they have been, which is, you know, good. Katana samurai don't have the most armor, better than shooting at these naginatas here. The most important thing right now is that this bow calf has a free shot at a general's bodyguard. And Samurai Extra should have taken advantage of this and just charged with the bow calf. Now I know you're like, oh, bow calf, you know, they're really, you know, skirmishing units. Well, you can put them in the melee and charge into the general and have devastating effects. I mean, their, their melee capabilities are still pretty good. Like they have a 10 charge. And I mean, they're not going to be able to necessarily kill the general that easily but still i mean you want to force your opponent into panic mode so to speak and they could potentially make the kikawa abandon the position that they have with the sword dojo so just something to keep in mind also too with this yari cav unit sneaking that yari cav all the way around to hitting the general would be the best option of course like abandoning this entire side of Cav and sending one Yari Samurai over just to protect this flank, bring your general over here to secure the Ashikaga general's, you know, safety. It, it, it's kind of that simple, really. And ultimately, that's a huge missed opportunity for a victory there for the Ashikaga. Now, in the meantime, we got some Yari Samurai rushing forward towards the Naginatas, and oh, exactly what I told the Ashikaga to do now, the Kikawa take advantage of. And this is a really good play by Anita right here. Charging straight for the general, not even worrying about this Yari Cav there. The other Yari Cav for the Ashikaga, not doing anything. And there we got a charge on the general. It's uphill, but it doesn't matter because the general is now getting overwhelmed. Now retreating by three Yari Cav units. This Yari Cav needs to get in the fight now, and so does this one. So yeah, the loss of the general is crucial. And of course, on the charge as well. Now, no one controls the sword dojo, but the Ashikaga do have the archery dojo. But... Bonsai's but the Nodachis. However, it doesn't matter because the Katana Sam upgrades are just making the hugest difference. And also, there's no general. The general for the Ashikaga has fallen. And now let's see. It looks like they're in full retreat now. All the Nodachis, even once their Bonsai's are gone. Let's see, the Yaris retreating also as well. These Naginatas holding the front line. They're getting hit by the bow samurai right at point blank range. Even the bow cav is unable to really do much here. And it looks like the Kikawa cav have, you know, evened out the fight over there and even charged into the bows. So overall, this is just really devastating. Now, something that the, the Kikawa player could have done is after charging into the general is send the cav towards the front line. But it didn't matter at the end of the day because it looks like the Kikawa have won the frontline battle and now all that's left is the Bow Cav. Uh, okay, charge into Bow Samurai, but this Bow Cav is going to rout. We got some Yari Cav unit over there. <laughs> Not really much left to do for them. And yeah, this is just taking out the general really is what turned the tide of this battle. And there you go, the Ashikaga now are in full retreat. So congrats on Anito for taking the first battle of this match. Now let's go into the second battle. For the second battle of this match, we are on the map Rice Fields, which really needs no introduction. Everyone knows Rice Fields. It's a classic tournament pick here, but let's just go over the dojos real briefly or the key buildings. So we have the sword dojo here, the farmhouse in the center, and the shrine on the far left end. So the Shrine and Sword Doge are the most important, so I expect both players to be going for it. Based off their deployments, it looks like the Kikawa have a slight advantage because they're aiming for kind of both of these dojos here, whereas it looks like the Ashikaga are deployed kind of on this far left side for the Shrine, but there is a 
unit I have there. Anyways, let's go over the army compositions and see if they brought anything differently. Starting off with the Ashikaga once again. Here we go. We got some Yari Samurai here. No Dachi, so it looks like a very similar build here. We got Bowery Monks once again, so two Bowery Monks. But yeah, still the same. No Dachi, Yari Sam sort of uh, core. And then we have three Yari Cav right there behind. Then on this far side, we have a light cav unit. So pretty balanced army once again. Less bows, though, this time, which I like on this map. And here we have the Kikawa. So let's see what Denito brought. We have Naginata Samurai once again. So more Naginatas and Katanas here, also all vetted up or upgraded. Then we got some Iyari cav. And this time, it looks like an extra unit Iyari cav. And no real bow unit. So this is very much a samurai core with a emphasis on rushing, but not really per se, because the Naginatas aren't really associated with rushing. So it's like a hybrid rush army, but still a pretty interesting army to bring. And again, you know, I'll vet it up. So we'll see if the quality again beats the quantity. All right. Let's get this underway and let's watch kind of both armies just rushing up here. So there we go. We got the Kikawa running towards the sword dojo. We got the Ashikaga rushing towards the shrine. It, clearly, both armies are fully concentrated here. And we got the cab flexing out immediately on this side. Whereas all the units are kind of bunching up together. Really, you only need to send one unit to capture each of the key buildings, though. So in a sense, all you need to do is like send one spear unit to each dojo and then just like set up your army in the middle. Kind of like choosing where exactly you want the battle to be taking place or the main part of the conflict, I should say. Anyways, we got both armies now setting up. Let's get a better view of kind of what a soldier sees from here. You can see just like the rice fields right here. And of course, you can see the Ashikaga banners waving in the wind on the far end of the battlefield. And yeah, it seems like both armies are kind of just setting up here. So let's just speed things up a little bit we got the cab flexing out and again the light cab right here dismounted trying to capture the farmhouse is pretty good but yes exactly the kikawa rushing in some cab there but honestly you really only need to send one cab unit to threaten the light cab there thankfully though the ashikaga move up their spears the yari sam in time which is really good strategy and Honestly, you could have been better off just sending a Yari Samurai unit over there to capture rather than the Light Cav and like risk the Light Cav instead so you don't have to dismount them. But yeah, so far it's just positioning. So we got the Sword Dojo versus the Shrine and of course the Cav rushing out to the left side where most of the Yari Cav for the Ashikaga are and are they going to make a charge? No, still just going off to that left flank and of course the Kikawa... Infantry rushing up. We got the Bow Warrior Monks getting into position here to send a few volleys of arrow fire into these katanas and Naginatas rushing forward. We got the, is the light cav going to get caught by these katanas? Possibly. And let's see, we got the cav still on this far side and the front line of the Ashikaga kind of holding firm. Right now they're probably going to be losing the farmhouse, but Bow Warrior Monks fire a good volley into the katanas and Go the opening charges. Yari Sam versus Katanas. Some more Katanas rushing in here. And so the battle begins. Of course, the Nodachi signaling off their bonsais. And just this epic front line right here. You can see the Nodachis rushing in immediately after the Yaris. I might have sent in the Nodachis first, to be honest. Let's see what the Cav's doing. So we got the Ashikaga Cav, and here comes the Kikawa Cav right here. Oh, that's a vicious charge. Oh my god. Oh my god, how brutal. And of course, you can hear the Bonsai's going off on this side. And really, one of the biggest problems for Anito here in the Kikawa is that his infantry isn't being supported, and you got Yari Cav over there, and the general is too far away. Gotta bring the general up here to stand and fight and rally. Yeah, just bloody charge on this side. So Nodachi's even getting in, in the fight with the Nagiratas. And here come the Cav just rushing in. This isn't really the greatest of charges, but I mean, you'd be better off going for the general and the bows right here. That's the thing. But then again, there's so much Ashikaga infantry around here. 
Still just a really, really close fight. Yashikaga Daimyo sounding, you know, the rally. And here comes the Kikawa Daimyo as well, charging into the fight. You know, both the generals. This is just brutal combat right here. And it looks like the Kikawa kind of have the advantage in the center, but the Ashikaga are holding the flanks. So let's see if the Ashikaga center can hold and maybe if the Kikawa can break out from this little encirclement that we see. But so far, all the, this, 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 this looks like dead even right now. Maybe a slight favor to the Kikawa. See the Damio of the Ashikaga getting into stand and fight. Some Yari Cab over here fighting, but... Yeah, there's Yari Samurai on this side, kind of beating the katanas. But the center is being held by all these Naginatas for the Kikawa right now. But there's still some Nodachis fighting on, even though they're like heavily outnumbered almost, it seems, in terms of units. But this is not good for the Kikawa. The center is breaking. Where's the general? The general broken. I think the Kikawa general has fallen. So, yeah, right now they're kind of getting encircled, even though these Nodachis are starting to break as well. And the Kikawa are kind of rallying back, even though they lost some of their troops. These Naginatas are still holding off against the Yaris right now. Oh, this is a tough fight, but the general for the Ashikaga is still alive. Here, the shame for display being signaled by the, uh, <laughs> the, the advisor there. Yeah, this is just bloody Yari versus Naginata fighting. Really what the Sengoku era combat would have been as there were really no katanas used that much as a main infantry weapon. Who is going to win? Who will prevail? Will be the Ashikaga or the Kikawa? Both fighting for their clans desperately in this frontline engagement. This bloody conflict. It looks like the Kikawa are breaking. They're rushing off and the Ashikaga are able to miraculously beat back the center of the Naginata and Katana core of the Kikawa. And all that's left now is a Yari Cav all the way over here, which would have been so useful in the battle. And Nito made a huge mistake by having this Yari Cav just sitting here doing nothing. Could have charged into the back for Hammer and Anvil. Could have tried charging into the general wall, you know, before... Generals in stand and fight, but now all that's left are, of course, spears and the sword unit. So this is not going to look good. We'll speed things up and just watch maybe this valiant last charge here by the Kikawa. Going to have to make an effort to attack here. And of course, the Ari Sam rushing after them. And uh, Nito might want to prolong this a little bit to get a better charge, but ultimately, at the end of the day, Anito must charge with this Yari Cav. Speed things up a little bit more, see how long this wild uh, repositioning and uh, cat and mouse game endures, so to speak. Yeah, recapturing the shrine, or at least uncapping the shrine. There we go, dismounting them here. Let's see the general charging in right into Yari Cav, though. Yari Cav dismounted, though, are spears, so. Camera Extra has to be careful here and wisely pulls back the uh, general in time. And here come the Yari Samurai fighting as well. The Yari Cav have somewhat similar stats, but again, you have to remember that the Ashikaga have the shrine here and the farmhouse. So they have the stamina and they have the morale bonus, whereas the Yari Cav only have um, the sword doja at the moment. And there you have it. It looks like the Ashikaga finally are able to catch that Yari Cav unit and attain victory. So you know what that means, everyone. We're going on to a third battle of this match. After two bloody battles in which both clans saw victory, it is now time for the third and final battle of this match. This is for everything. This is... A battle for survival for both clans because the loser of this battle will be eliminated from the tournament as this is the loser's first round. So let's review the map real briefly, which as you all know is Chugoku River. We have three key buildings. We have the workshop, the sword dojo, and the archery dojo. So the workshop and sword dojo are 
two of the best. So I expect both players, as their deployment indica indicates, to um, go for them. Now, let's review the army composition of the Kikawa here, positioned right in this river and on the little island that it surrounds. So we got some uh, Naginata Samurai right here, about four Naginata Samurai. And then we got some Katanas, so another four Katanas. So a very similar, pretty much, build. Nothing really changed from the previous battle. And now we go over here to the Ashikaga. Let's see exactly what they brought. So right here we got more Yari Cav, about two Yari Cav. We got some Light Cav, and of course we got the Nodachis and the Yari Samurai. So I think a very similar army from the previous battle, except I don't see... Uh, there's one Bow Warrior Monkey in it, and there's a second Bow Warrior Monkey in it. So yeah, pretty much the exact same armies brought by both players. So this should be interesting. Let's get things underway. Speed things up, of course, and we'll just watch both armies' position. So here we got the Yari Cav rushing out over down this hill right here for the Ashikaga. And on the other side, you can see the Kikawa sending their troops marching, some in the river, some out of the river towards the workshop over there. And then we got the Kikawa Cav, all four Yari Cav units rushing towards the Ashikaga Cav here by the Sword Dojo. See them peeling off, kind of going towards this hill and, and into this tree line. Meanwhile, you got the main Ashikaga force over here, all of the infantry corps, and just rushing towards the sword dojo at the moment. So, again, it looks like the Kikawa cab is split off from the infantry right here at the moment. And yeah. Both are going for separate dojos here, so this should be really, really interesting. And of course, now the Yari Cav here is going hunting for some Light Cav on this far right side of the Ashikaga's flank. So far, nothing happening yet. Let's speed things up just a little bit here. You can see the uh, Cav of the Ashikaga kind of mirroring or following the Kikawa Cav here. And there's no real reason for them to cap the Archery Dojo, but maybe just prevent the Ashikaga from taking it to boost the Bow Warrior Monk's reload speed, which is a really good strategy here. But at the same time, you don't want to keep your Cav too far away from your infantry. Because the thing is, is while this infantry is rather experienced with all their upgrades, they're vulnerable because they don't have the Cav support. So that's something to keep in mind. And the Ashikaga could take advantage of this. Because they could put some Yari Samurai over here to protect the flanks and just send everybody this way and maybe crush the infantry before the Cav get there in time. Which I think is exactly what Samurai Extra is planning on doing. Let's see, the Ashikaga have the terrain advantage with this hill. And here come the Kikawa. Are they going to charge up this hill? They're going to have to because they don't have any missile units. So these Bow Warrior Monks are going to be shooting down on them. From a superior position. They have the high ground. The Ashikaga have the high ground. This is a really bad position to have your entire army in. Especially with the Cav going on either flanks right now. And the Kikawa Cav need to rush over really quickly. But see, there you go. The Yari Samurai in the back right there. That's really crucial. So now the biggest problem is. Is I think the Kikawa have to retreat here. You have to pull back your troops. But the thing is. Is that. Anito won't back down from a challenge. So here he goes, rushing forward with the general and the katanas in the rear. This is the problem because now the Yari Cav can hit the katanas from behind. This is a really good, really good charge right here. A samurai extra. And now you see the big problem here is that this Kakawa Cav can't really do anything, but you gotta get into this engagement right here. You gotta get into the front line. You gotta support. You gotta support these katanas. They're they're getting they're getting killed by the Yari Cav just Losing about a third of their troops just from the charge alone. So the front lines have clashed right here. But the problem is, is that the Kikawa are all kind of bulged up. Or sort of, um, it's like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> Bunched up is the expression I was going for. But yeah, here you go. So this is a huge problem because they're charging uphill. They're outnumbered. The general's in the thick of the fighting. And it looks like the Ashikaga here with the high ground are just... Brutally destroying the Kikawa front line. I mean, they're they're not standing any chance here. I was going to zoom in to, to watch the fighting, but it's it's 
it's kind of slowly evaporating. Some of the Naginatas are holding, and there's a violent cav charge here by the Ikikawa cav right into the back lines. But as you can see, the Ashikaga just have so many more troops. The shameful displays are already being called out. And as you can see, <laughs> looks like the Ikikawa cav are not going to be able to make that much of a difference here. And that's really a great way to neutralize your opponent's cav. A really great way. As you see, even the Naginatas are not going to be able to hold off against no Dachis, especially with the Sword Dojo. Like they might have extra melee defense in the workshop, but it's only going to be a matter of time. And look at that. The Ashikaga just overwhelming in really taking advantage of the high ground to secure victory for Samurai Extra 3064. Congratulations to him for advancing to the second round of the loser's bracket. And it is truly a sad day for the Kikawa clan as they have been eliminated from the tournament. But well done on your tournament run. Anito, I look forward to seeing you in future tournaments potentially. And good luck on continuing your Shogun 2 multiplayer journey as well. I hope you enjoyed this commentary and analysis video. And thank you all so much for watching. I'll be back shortly with some more of the Shogunate Total War tournament coverage for you all soon. Anyways, take care, you guys.